If you follow the NFL, you'll know that right now they're in the middle of their free agency period, which we like to call a silly season. And that got me thinking, with all these big deals in the NFL right now, what are some really big ones that completely broke the NASCAR world? And that got me thinking the last 20 years or so. Free agency in NASCAR, or silly season, has exploded. So today I wanted to look back from 2002 to 2022 which are the biggest free agents. Now, of course, I won't be looking at this year per se, but I'll be looking at every year leading up to it. I will preface though, I'm not gonna be using rookies that were in the development period when it came to going, for instance, from the Gibbs Xfinity team to the Gibbs Cup team or something like that. I'm not gonna get drivers who had a substantial amount of time the year before in the car they're driving in the current year. And in general, I'm gonna stick to basically free agents only. So we'll get right into that right after this. Spring is fast approaching, and with that comes getting out more, later nights, and of course, more NASCAR. So you don't wanna be stuck in the store getting ingredients or stuck making a boring long recipe. Well, that's where HelloFresh comes in. HelloFresh offers delicious meals that also are great at saving time. These recipes come with the ingredients already pre-packaged and sustainable and also come in different options. For instance, I chose a low-calorie healthy option to help with my marathon training goals. Right here, I'm having some delicious one-pan ginger beef lettuce wraps that I made with my girlfriend and friends. So, in order to get your HelloFresh meals, go to HelloFresh.com. Use code ICEBERG16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That's HelloFresh.com. Use code ICEBERG16 and get up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Now, with that being said, back to the show. For 2002, you have to look at Ricky Rudd being the biggest free agent and him going to the Wood Brothers. Now, he was with Robert Yates Racing in the number 28 Ford, and he did have a brief career resurgence with Yates, but everything really changed when he went to the Wood Brothers. The team was just not at the same level that Yates was at the time, and over a three-year span, he only had seven top fives and 17 top tens. Now contrast this with the man he replaced, who replaced him in sort of a driver swap of Elliot Sadler, who went over to Yates and struggled in 03, but made the chase in 04 before struggling his way out of the ride in the middle of the 2006 season. For the biggest free agent of 03 going into 04, we have Joe Nemechek moving from Hendrick Motorsports in the 25 car over to MB2 Motorsports in a number 01 US Army Chevrolet. This move wasn't one that really propelled him to be an elite driver by any means, but he did get a win at Kansas in 2004 and remained with the team steadily through the Ginyer and also DEI's merger in 2007 before losing his ride in all of the different disarray that that caused. Overall, it wasn't a terrible move, but it was not a high profile move by any means. The same can be said about the biggest free agent from 04 into 05, that being Dave Blaney to RCR in 2007. Blaney had showed flashes of brilliance in his brief career, but in general was an underfunded equipment. Now he did race for a small bit of time in 2004 for Johnny Sauter, as Sauter was kicked out of the 30 car at RCR, but I'm not gonna count that as he wasn't in that car through the end of the year because Jeff Burton took it over. He would race only one year, the 2005 season, in the Jack Daniels 07 car before Clint Boyer came up to the Cup Series. The most high profile free agent of 2005 was most certainly Kurt Busch, and he would end up driving the Blue Deuce at Penske. The thing about Kurt Busch is that he was coming off of winning the first chase for the next Dell Cup, so his stock had never been higher. Bush had a nasty breakup with Roush, though. While the performance was still there, even if it wasn't to a championship level in 2005, it was still pretty good. But it was key pointed by the two race suspension he had at the end of the season, as before the Phoenix race, he was pulled over for drunk driving. 
So he spent six years at Penske after this, and in that time he did get 10 wins and finished as high as fourth in points in 2009. He was the best non-Hendrick car that year. Now, as for other people who were free agents that year, Jamie McMurray went from Ganassi to Roush. He got two wins in his time, but it was nothing really too memorable. And then Bobby Labonte went to Petty Enterprises and really started his career self-destruction. For 2006, you'll probably be surprised by this, but in general, the biggest free agent that year was actually Casey Mears, who ended up going to Hendrick Motorsports. He was a driver who had shown potential in pretty under-equipped Ganassi equipment in the 41 car, especially at the end of the 2005 season. He went to the vacant 25 ride and really kind of fit in with a lot of the drivers there as he fit into that kind of group. He only got one win a fuel mileage race at the 2007 Coke 600, and that was one win in two years. There were two other major free agents that year, but either they had said that they would retire, like Mark Martin initially did before he went again part-time in 2007, or their stock was pretty low, like Brian Vickers, who went to Team Red Bull in the 83 car and did end up actually out-competing Casey Mears easily, winning at Michigan in 2009 before making the chase. So, pretty big class there. For 2007, if you don't know that the biggest one was Dale Earnhardt Jr., you obviously weren't watching at the time. Dale Earnhardt Jr. went to Hendrick Motorsports, as we all know. But the deal is, is that he was the biggest free agent in NASCAR history, and to this day, I will argue that still applies. Remember, at the time, NASCAR was at its peak in popularity. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was at his peak in popularity, rivaling guys like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady for some of the most popular athletes in America and the world. And on top of all of that, they had the drama built up with DEI and Teresa Earnhardt. So he, leaving the team his father built, went over to Hendrick Motorsports and spent 10 years over at HMS. And he did get nine wins and made the chase six times, five in a row from 2011 to 2015. But I would say when you look back in history, the better signing was by JGR, who signed Kyle Busch, and I would argue that's one of the best signings of all time, as Busch since then has still been driving for JGR and has won two championships already. For 2008, the biggest free agent was Mark Martin, who, like Dale Jr. and Casey Mears before him, went over to Hendrick Motorsports to drive now the five ride. Now, the fun thing is, is that he didn't even want to be a free agent. He was comfortable at DEI in the eight car, but things didn't align the right way and Rick Hendrick talked him into driving the five car, so he signed on and scored five wins in 2009 before coming runner-up to Jimmy Johnson in the point standings. While 2010 and 2011 weren't all that great compared to 2009, that one season was magical for Mark Martin fans. And it was pretty good for Ryan Newman fans too, as he was a pretty big free agent in 2008 into 2009, but he would go over to the newly formed Stuart Haas Racing. In five years, he got four wins, which for Ryan Newman standards post-2003 is not a bad stat. In 2009, the biggest free agent at the time would probably be Jane McMurray, who ended up going to Earnhardt Ganassi Racing. He was the odd man out at Roush as NASCAR made a really stupid move to limit the number of cars that an owner could have on track. He won three races for Ganassi right out the gate, and he had a very stable ride through the end of his career. But of the three major free agents that year, his signing was easily the worst. First off, you had Martin Truex Jr., who went to MWR, made the chase actually, and did break his very long winless streak. And then you have Brad Keselowski, who went over from the Hendrick development tree over to Team Penske and won the 2012 Championship and Cup as well as an Xfinity Championship in 2010. While 2010, you could argue Casey Kane was the biggest free agent, really it was actually Marcus Ambrose going to RPM. Kane had already pretty much signed something with Hendrick Motorsports early in the year and was off the board by the summertime. So when you look at Marcus Ambrose, him jumping to that vacant nine ride that Casey Kane was leaving behind was probably the best move of his career. He had two of the best years of his career in 2011 and 2012 and got a win in each season, including a barn burner at Watkins Glen in 2012. 
For 2011, the biggest free agent that year had to have been Clint Boyer, who ended up signing with Michael Waltrip Racing. In 2012, right off the bat, he finished second in the standings with three wins and was probably a Jeff Gordon crash at Phoenix away from actually being in the conversation due to how Brad Kozlowski ran in that race. But he wasn't the only free agent. This was when Danica Patrick signed officially with SHR to go part-time in the Cup Series. And then you have Kurt Busch, who went to the 51 car. And, uh, well, I don't think any Kurt Busch fan ever wants to talk about that again. For 2012, the biggest silly season move was by Matt Kenseth, who went from Roush Fenway Racing over to Joe Gibbs Racing. And this was really shocking for anybody who was watching NASCAR at the time, as, at the time, Matt Kenseth was the points leader when it was announced. But... It was a great move, and Kenseth showed that he could win no matter the equipment, no matter where he was, manufacturer, didn't matter. Because he went out there and scored tons upon tons of wins in 2013, and finished second in the standings, putting up a legitimate fight against Jimmy Johnson for his sixth championship. In five years with Joe Gibbs Racing, Matt Kenseth won 15 times. And I gotta say, that's a pretty good stat overall. Joey Logano was the other major signing at the time, but for a lot of people, they saw this as Team Penske wasting their time because Logano had been a mid-pack driver his whole career at that point. But he went to Penske, rose to his potential, and ever since has been a great championship-level driver for the captain. The funny thing about this is that both of these guys came together multiple times in their career, especially at Martinsville. The biggest move of the 2013 silly season was Kevin Harvick going over to Stuart Haas Racing. Now, at this point, Kevin Harvick had actually wanted out of RCR for a long time and had gotten to some spats. People forget that he was almost out the door in 2010, even when he was leading the points. And he probably looked at what Matt Kenseth did and thought, man, I really should have done that at the time. Well, he did pretty darn well when he went over to SHR. He won a championship right off the bat and became a top three driver of the decade. And on top of all of that, he is now in the top 10 of the NASCAR wins list and has really let his career flourish. There was one other really major signing at that point that a lot of people looked at and said, wow, that's a great move. And it was Ryan Newman going over to RCR and being pretty competitive. He finished runner-up to Harvick in the 2014 points, but he only got one win in five years, that being 2017 at Phoenix. There were two other major moves at this time. Kurt Busch went over to SHR and had a pretty good career revival, but nothing close to Harvick's. And then Martin Truex Jr. went over to Furniture Row Racing, where at first he was not really that good, but he ended up winning a championship in 2017 and ever since has been an elite driver. For the 2014 silly season, Carl Edwards takes the cake. Roush Fenway Racing at this point was starting to fall apart and Carl Edwards was the final piece to really fall away from their competitive ways. And he fell right into the hands of coach Joe Gibbs. He left Roush, jumped over there and was once again a championship contender. He won twice in 2015, and then three times in 2016, including a really awesome finish between he and teammate Kyle Busch, before going and choking the title away, and then abruptly retiring a year before the end of his first deal. I'll be real, 2015 and 2016 are pretty barren. The only one that you can really look at is maybe Brian Scott to RPM, but in all honesty, does anyone really remember Brian Scott in the Cup Series? As for high-profile signings, 2017 saw Casey Kane leave Hendrick Motorsports and go to drive for Levine Family Racing. This obviously was not a good career move, but it was all he had left, and he drove the 95 car. But it was only for a short time, as he never finished the season due to health concerns. There were two other major signings in this silly season. Bubba Wallace would be announced to move up to the famous 43, which I would say he got that car on TV for many reasons. And then you have Eric Almirola, who moved to the 10 cart SHR, where he races to this day, and for the most part has actually been pretty good, regardless of how his 2021 season looked. For 2018, the silly season news again revolves around Kurt Busch, this time going to Ganassi. As the aforementioned Jamie McMurray retired, the one car became opened. And, well, 
that went right to Kurt Busch. And he ran pretty well. He won and led laps on a consistent basis. He was someone who could match Kyle Larson at the time with performance. And overall, he was very serviceable in that ride. 2019 silly season saw Matt DiBenedetto, who went from Levine Family Racing being replaced by Christopher Bell and instead jumping over to the Wood Brothers because he was hand-picked by Paul Menard, the previous driver of that car. 2020 silly season was very, very silly. And in this one, Kyle Larson was the biggest story going over to Hendrick Motorsports. But of course, it was after, we'll just call the controversy is what we'll call it. He rattled off 10 wins last year, a championship, and he pretty much dominated the entire sport, asserting himself right to the top. It didn't seem like it at the time when he had been suspended, but in that moment, he became probably the best free agent signing since, uh, honestly, Kyle Busch. As for others that year, there was Bubba Wallace who went over to 2311 to be the first driver for Michael Jordan's new team. So that was pretty cool. And then Ross Chastain jumped up into the Cup Series with Ganassi finally, and Daniel Suarez got to go into the first track house car. And now we get to last year's silly season, where once again, you knew we had to add him in. Kurt Busch again pops up in this video. Signing with 2311 Racing, he got to jump over to the Toyota banner. And to be honest, we really can't say too much about how his career at this team will be or has been because it's only been four races as of recording this. But so far, so good. Another driver that many people didn't see coming up to the Cup Series at the time was Harrison Burton, who moved from the JGR tree over to the Wood Brothers. Again, he hasn't had that great of a year, but we can't judge it yet because of how early it is. And after saying all that, it's about it. Those are the biggest ones. Now, I might have missed a couple here or there or discounted different people. You let me know in the comments down below and let me know what, in your opinion, was the biggest free agent signing in NASCAR history? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content like all this and everything else on my channel. And to all my channel members, thank you so much for your continued support. So until next time, have a good one.